mods make up the longevity and oftentimes lifeblood of a good deal of games. And that is definitely the case for all of Paradox games, including Crusader Kings 3. From total conversions to small graphical UI changes, you can get a lot of mileage out of a variety of different mods, depending on what experience you're after or what aspects of the game you wish to alter. In this video today, I want to briefly go over how to install mods in the Steam Workshop. This is pretty self-explanatory, but just so that there's no confusion. Then talk about my top 8 mods for Crusader Kings 3. If you'd like to jump ahead to a specific mod or find out which mods are in this video, you can look at the chapters in the timeline or listed in the description. A quick word of caution though, mods for Crusader Kings 3 will almost always turn off achievements and some will outright disable Iron Man mode. In each section, I'll state whether they do so, but make sure you look at any mod's description just in case either of those attributes matter to you. And as always, if you've yet to pick the game up, you can find a link in my description to my newly launched storefront on Nexus. The platform gets keys directly from the developer and provides them to you to be placed into Steam, and it's a great way to support the channel. So thank you very much if you decide to use my link. But let's get started on our list of top 8 mods for Crusader Kings 3. Before jumping into the list itself, let's talk about how to install mods real fast. This is very easy. You just bring up your library on Steam, click Crusader Kings 3, go to the Workshop tab. A sec as you click it, and it'll jump over. Select any one of the mods. I'm just going to use Nameplates here. Nameplates is actually not on this list, but I'm going to give it a quick little feature here because it is a really cool mod that simply adds nameplates whenever you're dealing with a decision in between other characters. So this way you don't have to select them and see who they are. You get a real quick um, analysis of what individuals are, what those individuals are and what their relation to you is, like your grandson, your daughter, so on and so forth. But once you've selected your mod, you're gonna go ahead and press subscribe and that will add it into your list of mods. Now, you can quickly discover that by going back over here, go to browse and go to subscribed items that will have all the mods that you have currently. And then when you boot the game up, depending on some of the mods, you'll see this screen, of course, when you click the mods button, some will be will pop up in this menu. Uh, not all of them will, so some you can enable and disable through this menu. And if you wanna disable them and they're not in this menu, you'd have to unsubscribe within the workshop. But hopefully this gives you an idea of how to install mods, how to get them running, and how to disable them and enable them if you so wish uh, for your future playthroughs in Crusader Kings 3. Our first mod on our list is the full screen barber shop. So to access this, we're going to right click our character and then click the barber shop. Now this mod is not compatible with Iron Man or achievements. So if you are looking to do an Iron Man save or looking to play an Iron Man playthrough, or get some achievements, this is not going to work for you. So this is a pretty cool mod because it's a very uh, aesthetic themed one, right? You can kind of change how this character looks, you can change the background, you can change his poses. Um, all the things that you normally get in the barbershop are right here in the upper right corner, but you can do a little bit more. You can go over the top here. Change everything around here, we'll switch. Oh, high nobility, clothing number four. Um, but you get a bunch of different poses you can pop them into you can swap up again their background and what's cool about this too is you can add in your spouse if you have one you can add in your heir <laughs> your heir if you want look at him just kind of creepily looking at me like that uh, but you can add in more elements to this so it does make for uh really cool options if you want to uh, take pictures and post it on say twitter if you have a youtube channel yourself and you want to just quickly grab the character out for a thumbnail you can do that so you have a lot of really cool options with this and i think it's a really awesome way to get a pretty cool little snapshot of your character in a very specific setting um if you want to really get a good picture here you can hide every oops sorry you can hide the controls um, by pressing f4 and have them just come back and forth so i think this is a very simple mod but i really enjoy this one and i use it a lot for my thumbnails and i like to really kind of get down to the uh, nitty and gritty of the poses to get a pretty cool um a pretty cool dynamic look for whatever I'm trying to convey. But very simple mod, again, not compatible with Iron Man or achievements, but it's the first on our list. 
Our next mod is the Title Ranked Portrait Borders mod. Now, if you've played Crusader Kings 2, this is going to be a bit of a throwback for you, but this will change the little icon that appears in the lower left corner of a portrait, denoting the rank of a character with a border instead. So this one is an emperor, this one is a king, this one is a duke, and the count, uh, I don't think there's vassals in here count here yeah there we go so there's the count right there so you get at a glance of a better visual representation of each one of these characters and their rank and again this is a little bit more indicative of what we had with crusader kings 2 so if you did not you're not a huge fan of the small little uh triangle that appears in the lower left corner behind the symbol for their um their uh, landed uh, coat of arms, then this one's gonna be for you. It's a nice, simple one, and it is also Iron Man and achievement compatible. So you can turn this on, and you'll be totally fine to play an Iron Man game or get your achievements. But again, a very simple UI change that I think just makes the game a little bit more fluid, and you don't have to kind of dive down to see what a character is by really looking in that lower left corner or, or left clicking them. Our next mod is called Minor Titles. And this one is very fun. It has a lot of really cool uh, role play and flavor to the game. And it is unfortunately not a uh, not compatible with Iron Man or achievements as it does quite a bit of altering to the game. But you get in the council this new Minor Titles tab. And in it you get six new titles. Now one thing to take note of is that these are minor titles. They're not your full on council. So if you appoint a um, powerful vassal to them, they're not going to get the full benefit of, say, being in the council. They get a new one that says position in the council denied. Powerful vassal minus 40. So they still get a small benefit here by on the council plus 10, but they still have that minus 40 penalty for now being on this new minor council. But it's really fun. It has a lot of really cool flavor. So the cup bearer, for example, is someone who's going to be toasting to you or, te or tasting all of your food. So wine and food tasting gives you a disease resistance and a prestige bonus, as well as hostile scheme resistance. Or advise the liege, giving you martial, steward, and learning bonuses, but you suffer prestige and hostile scheme resistance. You've got your court dwarf who's going to help you out with a hostile scheme resistance, general opinion, hostile scheme success chance, and personal scheme success chance reductions. Uh, you also get other fun things like improve the liege's image, which helps you with your attraction. You have the almoner who's going to either decide to pull uh, donations from the clergy or from your vassals. You have your tax collector who can do tax exemption, exemptions or tax extortion or just normal taxes. And these two are really cool. Uh, master of the horse and court champion. So court champion will use your high prowess knights to give you bonuses to prestige and give you hostile scheme resistance because he's acting as your personal guard or lead knights to help increase the number of knights and their effectiveness. While the master of horse can help you reduce your men at arm maintenance, it can help increase the damage or pursuit training of your light cav and heavy cavalry. And you can do defensive training to increase your screening and toughness attributes for your light and heavy cavalry. As of the most recent uh, update to this mod, though, you can actually do something cool with Vikings. Let's switch over to a Viking character. Do Switch over to the minor titles. So they now also get Scalds, they get skiers, or Seers, and Master of Ship. So they get a lot of really cool different bonuses. And depending upon your rank, Count gets access to these bottom two, Duke gets the bottom two plus the next two, and then King will get all the above or I guess all the below. So it's a really fun, cool mod that adds a little variety and allows you to do um, some more with some of your high skilled characters that you have within your court. Our next mod is called Expanded Alerts, and this is not Iron Man compatible, so it is also not achievement compatible. But this one creates some additional alerts to notify you at the top of the screen. And for the most part, we have the uh, the typical ones, you no know, lifestyle, un air unmarried, you're not married, um, so on and so forth, empty council position. But here's a really important one. Let's close all these. Boom. No court physician. So this will add assigning a guardian, can ally, can call an ally to war, not enough knights, no court physician, a truce is ending, and a hostile siege. These would normally be in this little blue area where it would say suggestions, but... Um, or not all the time. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, getting your court physician isn't always there. In fact, it never is really there. But 
you can now know if you don't have a court physician, the game is going to notify you because maybe your court physician died and you just didn't know it. Now press this button and it'll bring up this menu right here and you can search for another one. I find this to be extremely handy because like I said before, the game doesn't notify you if you have a court physician vacancy or uh, if you have uh, not enough knights that you want to bring more in. You can use this expanded alerts mod to help quickly jump into those so that not too much time goes by. Our next mod, Clear Notifications, is just another little quality of life improvement that I'd love to see added to the base game, but unfortunately, since it is not, it is not compatible with Iron Man or Achievements. But when you start to get notifications piling up on the right side, it can be really annoying to kind of push your way through all of them. Instead, it adds this nice little button right here to just simply clear all of them or pin certain ones here, pin notifications so they don't move to the center when opening a window is just very handy uh, but let's say i know i only have two here so it's a little bit easier to get rid of them but if you have a large amount you can just simply press this button and boom they're gone so a very small very easy quality of life improvement but i think a very necessary one especially as you get into the later portions of the game when you're dealing with a lot of things when you're moving at five speed and you're just getting tons of sieges and raids going so on and so forth this is great to just kind of clean the clutter up on the screen our next one on this list is called Extended Nicknames. This is by the same gentleman who created minor titles, and he also made another mod that allows you to craft legendary weapons that act as traits that give you additional bonuses. But Extended Nicknames is really cool. It essentially rolls off of a number of physical traits or maybe geographical aspects of your playthrough, whatever it is. And as you can see from these pictures here, um, you can see the Knight of the North, you can see uh, the Half Man, the Crimson Knight. Um, it further says here as well that if you have albino and a certain level of prowess, it maybe gives you stuff like the White Wolf. So what's really cool about this mod is it adds a good lever, level of granularity to the nicknames in the game. They're not so generic as the Foolish, the Brave, the Bold, the Heartbreaker, so on and so forth. Um, but they really uh, pay a lot of homage to the specific trait or the uh, physical characteristics of your character so it makes those nicknames a little bit more personal to you and they're divided up by certain aspects of the map itself so i really like this mod just to add a little bit more flavor to your playthrough and make it feel like you're kind of really slinking in to the role-playing aspect now of course since it does change a lot about the game it is not iron man compatible and as thus it is not achievement compatible either our next mod is our one of two total conversion mods for Crusader Kings 3. So these will completely change the way you play the game. They're not going to be your standard Crusader Kings 3 playthrough. In fact, this sets us into two different historical land, uh, bookmarks, 2115 and 1590 BCE in the middle of the Bronze Age before the Bronze Age collapse um, some four or five hundred years later. So you have a lot of really cool, interesting options to start the game out too. Uh, you can see you can start in portions of uh, Mesopotamia, over here where the Hittite Empire is, over in Babylon. You have a lot of really cool starting options. And if I switch over here to playing as any ruler in 1590, you can see how this mod really kind of flushes out the map. Now, you'll also notice the map is entirely different. It is no longer Western Europe um, and portions of, well, all of Europe and portions of uh, Asia. This is just simply going to be Greece, uh, Anatolia, you're going to be over here in North Africa and in Egypt. Um, so you have a lot of really fun options to play through. And each one of these locations will have either a religion that is already in Crusader Kings 3, like Hellenism right here, or, or you can get a Kushite down over here, or one of the religions that's specific to this mod. Both of the total conversion mods we're talking about will have these um, entirely unique religions that are, are exclusive to the mod. So it's really, really cool. You can play through any portion portion of the Aegean Sea over here. Um, you can play as Mycena. Uh, you have all these really fun options. And playing as Mycenaeans, I think, is really cool because you can get into that whole Bronze Age portion of Troy, which is hundreds of years later but still this is still a really fun cool and unique way to play the game that is very different when you take a look at even the military your um men at arms are completely different here you get light chariots boar tusk warriors light footmen bowmen spearmen axemen um, everything is different even taking a look over at your knights they have different names depending on the culture you're looking at 
Now, these mods are still heavily under or in production right now, so they are rolling out a number of patches and changes. But I think if you're looking for a total conversion mod that stays very much in line of playing some sort of historical representation like you get with the Crusader Kings 3, the Bronze Age mod is an amazing way to play through the game. And if you do want to see gameplay of this in a full length campaign, you can check out my friend Surreal Beliefs. He has a YouTube channel as well, and he has a playthrough of both the Bronze Age mod and the next mod we're about to play through. Just to kind of look around here, you can see some of the characters, some of the locations like the Hittite Empire over here. Some really, really, really cool, diverse uh, playing options all throughout Anatolia. Um, and it's a really, really, really interesting mod. So this is our first total conversion mod. Let's jump over now to our other total conversion mod. Um, and one thing of note too is they said that they are going to be adding in more clothes and more headgear like you can see over here in Egypt. It's just so sick. Uh, and you can be more absolutely yoked guys like this Pharaoh. <laughs> but let's jump over to our other total conversion mod to give you a different take on Crusader Kings 3. Our second total conversion and last mod on this list is the Princes of Darkness. So if you are familiar with the World of Darkness RPGs or the Vampire Masquerade universe, this is going to be right up your alley. If you don't know what those are and you like vampires, you're really going to like this too. So this game completely converts and changes the map to fit into the World of Darkness. And this takes place in the historical landmark of 1230 and creates a sort of alternative universe. Now. As you look through the map here, there are some locations that are not 100% in line with the mod just yet. And as I said before, both this and the Bronze Age mod are still heavily under construction and in development. But looking at probably one of the more uh, Tremere here, which is probably one of the more identifiable names from the series, you can see that um, this location has different specific cultures to it. And there's a whole slew of religions as you look Across the map here that are again unique to this uh, mod but taking a look at, at these characters it's it's very unique and different because of course they're vampires so they're 354 years old and when you boot the uh, mod up and load into a campaign it gives you a nice little prompt here that gives you a good idea of how the mechanics work since this is such a crazy overhaul to the game bronze age of course is very familiar to what you're already playing but when you're playing this one a lot of things are different, so this gives you a nice crash course on some of the new features added. So I'm not going to jump into that, but you've got that here when you do decide to play the mod. And as such, since you are a vampire, you get access to some unique traits that are specific to vampires, like Animalism Advance, which increases your prowess. You get uh, Auspex, which increases again prowess. A supernatural discipline of a vampire, represented as Focus. It gives increased powers of perception, represented as Perks. Um, and you get even more and more of these, and you can expand into them as you take a look at your lifestyles. So you have your normal five lifestyles, right? Diplomacy, so on and so forth. But you have these other ones that are unique to being a vampire. And they have animalism and protean, so you have all these different evolutions of some of these perks as you go up and down these chains, which is really cool. So... You can build out your vampire in really fun, cool, unique ways that really kind of hints to what you want to be. Do you want to be a guy who's uh, better at manipulating things from behind the scenes as skullduggery? Or are you really into being this brutal front lines warrior vampire that's just carving his way through all of well, what would be Europe? So you get a lot of really cool options here because this is such a crazy take on the game. And in addition to it, your character doesn't die like normal you, they can be killed they, they can have their head cut off i uh, think be burned at the stake so you do have to still worry about succession but since your characters are so strong take a look at this 35 prowess now let's look over at our champions 65 55 this game hinges more upon heavy champion use having very high prowess and lower levies so you're the the whole kind of focus here is having these very uh, brutalistic vampires and a, slow, a low amount of thralls essentially uh, following in their suit as you just kind of slaughter your way through stuff. And you are going to be playing more of a game of intrigue and in court because the lower the opinion of other vampires, the more they're going to try to essentially kill you through subterfuge. So this does uh, drastically change the way the game is played and it is very unique 
in a, its portrayal of the world of darkness. And you do get, of course, to some very unique religions that are attached to this as well, that give you certain virtues and sins as far as even your vampire abilities. So like I said, this one, very unique. And if you're looking for a whole different way to play Crusader Kings 3, this is definitely going to be a mod for you. This though brings our list to a close. And whether you're looking for one of the total conversion mods or just some really quick quality of life updates or maybe just some things that make the game a little bit more interesting, there's plenty to be had in the Steam Workshop. There are tons of other mods that are currently in development right now. I know one for a total Lord of the Rings overhaul to the game is coming and we'll probably see plenty of other things like a Game of Thrones mods and so on and so forth. So if you have any mods that you really enjoy, please, by all means, leave a comment below. Let people know what some of those mods are and where you can find them. You'll be able to find each one of these mods in the description. I've put a, a link to their corresponding Steam page. So go ahead and download them and check them out for yourself. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one. Take care.